Hey everyone, it's Keith here. We're in the middle of summer here in Australia and in today's video, we're taking a look at some of my favorite EDC gear during the summer. First up is the Alpaca Ghostling Nano. If you haven't seen my video on my favorite EDC gear in 2023, this was my favorite sling of the year. I've been using it as my daily carry for the past few months and I love this sling. I think the Ghost Sling Nano works the best during the summer. It's got a 1.6 litre carry capacity and works well for those days when you wear shorts. Although it's very compact, it can easily fit all of my daily carry like a phone, keys, wallet and earbuds. The Ghost Sling Nano is very sleek and easy to carry. It's got a Maglox buckle on the strap for quick detach and if you don't like using it as a sling, you can remove the straps and convert it into a small pouch. The Ghost Sling Nano is a versatile sling and it's a good option for short trips around the city. If you're looking for a compact sling just for your daily carry, I highly recommend checking out the Alpaca Ghost Sling Nano. My next summer favourite is the Salomon Speed Cross 5s. I've only had time to try these at a nearby park in a trail in the Blue Mountains and so far I'm really enjoying them. They're very comfortable, but I'm still getting used to the slightly narrower fit. When I picked these up, I ran into a sizing issue where true to size was too small for me. I recommend getting one size bigger, and if you have wide feet, I recommend considering the wide versions. The Speedcross 5s look pretty sleek, and I love the design. These have a beefy ankle and heel support, and I can feel it when wearing them. One highlight of most trail running shoes from Salomon is the speed lacing system. I find these to work surprisingly well, however, I am slightly concerned about how durable they are over time. One neat thing is that there's a small pocket on the tongue where you can tuck away the laces to give it more protection and a sleeker look. I've worn them for the whole day while exploring the Blue Mountains and they're very comfortable. The outsole has aggressive deep lugs and they are very grippy on the trail. So far the Speedcross 5s have impressed me and I can't wait to spend more time testing them on longer hikes and trails. If any of you have tried boots from Salomon, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to pick up a pair in the future. Another summer favourite is the Able Carry Max Backpack. I've been testing this sleek 30 litre backpack for the past few months and it's amazing. Most of the exterior is made from VX21 X Pack, with some areas like the back panel and bottom section using 1000D Cordura. This bag is built like a tank with custom bar tack stitching on areas like the straps and carry handles. The 30 litre size is probably too big for me to use as an everyday backpack, but this size is great for travel. I brought this as a carry on for my flight from Hong Kong to Australia and it worked perfectly. I could fit my laptop in the dedicated slot with my camera gear stored in the low pro creative box in the main compartment. Also on a recent road trip to Sydney, I used this main compartment to store my clothes and an extra pair of shoes. Even the front compartment can pack a surprising amount of gear. For my trip to Sydney, I managed to cram extra t-shirts and socks and it worked out pretty well. On the body, the backpack is quite comfortable. The back panel and shoulder straps are thick and well padded. Even with a heavy setup with camera gear, the weight isn't too bad and the sternum strap helps with stability. The Max backpack has worked perfectly for my travels. The X pack has held up very well and the entire bag is very well constructed. I can't wait to spend more time testing it and I'm interested in seeing how well it will work as my daily carry for all of my tech and accessories. If you want to see a more in-depth review, let me know in the comments. The Camelback Shoot Mag Bottle. I've been using it for the past half year and it's been my most used piece of gear during the summer. The one I have is the 750ml standard version, however there is a more expensive version with stainless steel insulation. The standard version is a decent water bottle especially for its price. Sometimes I've seen it go on sale on Amazon for under 30 Australian dollars. The Shoot Mag has an integrated carry handle which makes it easier to grab on the go or attach on the outside of a backpack with a carabiner. However, this carry handle might also be an issue when fitting into backpacks. This bottle also has a magnetic lid that keeps it secure when open. I find the magnetic lid quite useful and it also prevents the lid from falling off and disappearing. So far, I've enjoyed using this bottle throughout summer and it's been a great alternative to my heavier Swell Traveler bottle. Also, this bottle comes in this OD green colorway and it fits perfectly in my Able Carry Max and Daybreaker 2. My next summer favorite is the North Face Borealis Mini. 
I had no idea this backpack existed until I saw someone else's what's in my bag video. As soon as I saw this backpack, I loved the design. It's small and compact and I love how useful it's been during the past two months. I have a small frame and prefer carrying smaller backpacks over larger slings for long days when I'm out and about. When I went to Sydney, I brought this with me and it worked incredibly well as a minimal urban day pack. The backpack has some organization and pockets. It can fit the Camelback bottle with my other daily essentials like a jacket, sunnies, power bank and an umbrella. That's all I need for a day trip around the city and I loved using it. The entire setup is very lightweight and easy to carry for long hours. Since it's so small, I can easily navigate tight spaces like cafes, elevators or trains without worrying about the backpack snagging on things or other people. It's a fantastic backpack and I'm really happy with it. The Borealis Mini was quite hard to find in Australia, but for anyone interested, I'll include an Amazon link in the description box. Another piece of gear I've enjoyed using lately is the Olite Baton 4. As an owner of the Baton 3 with a charging case, there are some really nice upgrades to the Baton 4. The premium edition follows the same concept of a small flashlight with a charging case. The first upgrade is a brighter maximum output of 1300 lumens with a max throw of 170 meters. Another minor change is the stainless steel side switch with two indicator lights showing brightness and battery level. The indicators are a nice touch and the steel switch adds more durability compared to the rubber switch on the Baton 3. The upgrades on the light itself are quite small changes. The biggest change to the Baton 4 is the charging case. It now has a larger capacity of 5000 milliamps, which can charge the Baton 4 up to 5 times. Also, this case is now compatible with older models like the Baton 3, S1R Baton 2 and Perun Mini. On the side of the case, it now has a new LED display button that shows the remaining battery percentage. This button also doubles as a switch to operate the light in the case. It's a pretty cool feature, however I don't find it particularly useful for my use case. As a fan of the Baton 3, the new upgrades make the Baton 4 better and I've enjoyed using it as my daily carry. The light easily disappears in my pockets and I often throw the charging case into my sling or backpack and use it as a charger. I would love to see a similar charging case concept for bigger flashlights like the Warrior Nano. If anyone has any experience with the Warrior Nano, let me know your thoughts in the comments. It looks very interesting and I'd love to get my hands on one. Next up is the Civivi Chevalier. I've heard many great things about the bun lock on Civivis. I'm very late to the party and this is the first one I've tried from them and I understand the hype. It's tuned perfectly. The action is snappy and there's no blade play at all. Compared to a few other bun locks in my collection, the Civivi Chevalier has the best action. The one I have here is the one with the wooden handles and bead blasted blade. The edges on the wooden handles are smoothed out and it feels great in hand. It has a neutral grip with no hotspots and it's good for all types of cuts like draw cuts. My only concern about the handle is that it might get slippery when wet. Moving to the blade, the Chevalier uses a Sandvik 12C20N blade steel and has around a 3.5 inch sheep's foot blade. The 14C28N is solid and tough for a budget steel. I've tried another knife in the past with this steel and it holds its edge very well. For the Chevalier, it's the same story. The Chevalier surprised me and I think it's a solid knife. The snappy bun lock action is the highlight for me. I should also mention that this is the first version and there is a second version that Civivi recently released. However, I'm not sure what's new with them but I do like the blacked out blade with the grey aluminium scales. That version fits my style perfectly. And that wraps up my favourite gear and essentials in summer. I had a lot of fun checking out some new gear and there are a few that I'm adding to my current rotation, like the Alpaca Ghostling Nano and the North Face Borealis Mini. What are some of your summer favourites? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out last year's summer EDC video. However, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you might want to check out my winter EDC video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.